During my teenage years, I was searching quite extensively in regards to spirituality and also religion. And through that, I found yoga. And I think what attracted me to look further into uh, the actual practice of yoga is the fact that it's experiential. Um, you have to go through a process to understand. My parents, they raised me quite well telling me, okay, live like this and this and this, do these things. But when I started to practice yoga, there was a sense of connection on the inside where I really wanted to be a good person, um, where I felt motivated to, to, to transform myself uh, or, or move myself higher up. And the moment I came on my mat, I felt like I was home. I really felt like this is a space where I can really be me and really connect to this internal part of myself. I felt at home within myself. I felt at home with even the things I was struggling with. And that was huge for me in the beginning when I started the practice. And one reason why I continue to do this practice. In the Ashtanga Yoga practice, we learn many, many asanas. We go through this process of, of being taught and we guide ourselves through a sequence of postures. Um, and it looks to be on the outside very physical or to be representative of something very external. But underlying through all of that, what's really moving us within these asanas is the breath, is the focal point our sense of concentration. And through the asanas, through the act of, of performing the asanas, we're internally aligned. I feel like, personally, this is what really moves the action of the asanas. This is what breathes life into the asanas. It's like a form of, of expressing this internal aspect our, of ourselves to the outside, or also just using the asana to feel on the inside. And it's a marriage of both. The transformative process really comes through with feeling this connection. So the change really came from within. I think that was what was huge for me. Instead of these rules I was trying to follow on the outside to feel like I wanted to fit in, to, to want to fit in, um, to want to attain validation or even approval from my parents. Um, when I started to practice yoga, it really came from the inside. Um, there was a connection from the inside where there was a motivation to be better, to be more aware, to live on a higher level, to connect with people more authentically because I was connecting on the inside. Because I was aware of what was happening inside of me, there was more motivation to lead my life externally, connecting on a higher level. That internal connection is really what transforms us because we start to feel the importance of just shedding the layers that kind of just hold us back or cover up who we really are. I fell from a height of 40 feet while rock climbing and for two years I was in bed. In one way it was very traumatic and in another way it was very introspective. It gave me the direction for my life because I guess when one of the most important things that you love the most, which is movement, which was movement for me, is taken away from you, you become even more passionate. You, you feel like this is what you want more than anything in, in, in the world. I started reading up a lot on yoga. I realized that there's more to this body. There's, there is this mind-body connection. There is this connection to God.
I felt like it was all these things that took me in the direction of yoga and and eventually gave me back my power, gave me back my power to move, to express. You know, I feel like I'm ex extremely grateful because for the accident and also for finding yoga because of it. I have a lot of passion for movement. I guess it comes from the fact that it's not something I take for granted. And it is the yoga practice that to me really, really, really helps me to be able to move every day. And which is why it is my prayer. It's, it's how I express devotion to God. It's how I express devotion to myself. Um, it's how I feel alive. It's given me wings. I can dance, I can walk, I can run. It's, it's thanks to my daily yoga practice because the days that I don't do it, I, I mean, there are days that I can't really walk that well. It's the practice that just keeps it all going for me. For me, dance is freedom. I don't like to move too much from my mind when I dance. Yoga is, is my grounding and I feel dance is my freedom. And that's why I feel like the two of them complement each other for me. I think for me relationships, whether it's relationships with my partner or relationships with my family or relationship with my friends, I think yoga really helps me with this. The physical aspect is of course is, is challenging, but I find the, the connections with people and relationships are like I feel like my yoga practice is giving me training for that, which is the real yoga for me. It's a more richer, more fuller experience because you can watch your own self and you can watch how you're relating to other people. And sometimes maybe in the past, if there was any, um, you know, miscommunications with people, you could blame it on somebody else. But I think when you start practicing yoga you or asana, you become so much more awake. Doesn't mean you become enlightened, but you can see your own self. The other person becomes a mirror for you to see stuff in your own self and that's where I feel the daily practice comes in because you become so much more present to watching all the patterns of your own mind. When I first started with yoga it was really an individual process. It was. Um, feeling that I needed to heal myself in some way or um, understand my, myself through my body. And this, this was a, a practice that was really just about being on my mat by myself. Of course, I went to classes and had a teacher, um, but the, the practice was very individual. And as I have moved along in my yoga journey, it's become more about connecting with other people. I think lots of us know that the word yoga means union or comes from the same root as, as to yoke, which is another way of, of uniting. I mean, it's still a individual practice. You, you practice on your own, you do not practice with other people, but to interact with other people um, helps a lot to develop your, your, your own yoga practice. My teacher, Sakpa Rinpoche, taught me a lot about how 
opening the heart is possible in your individual practice and um, that really helped me with our relationship and um, on the other hand, on the other side, Liz helped me a lot with my um, practice of opening the heart as well. So I think it was an influence that, that, that um, worked on both sides. So, so my practice um, had influence on our relationship and our relationship had a big influence on my, on my practice, my physical practice, and my, my spiritual practice, and my meditation practice. My meditation practice, for example, did not exist <laughs> um, and it was something that I really have struggled with and it, it's so helpful to have somebody who has a meditation practice and gets up in the morning and does that and then I can just be in, in that space with him um, and, and kind of feed off of, of his strengths and, and there's a way that we practice together um, in terms of being in a, in a relationship with, with another yogi. And this for me is really a wonderful experience. Um, it allows us both, I think, to, to really commit in a, a way that's um, much deeper than, than one might do on their own. So that's it's a, a nice way to, to create a, a, a meeting point where we can all kind of grow, even though we are individuals with different, different perspectives and, and different ways of living. I left Brazil very young, I was about 17 years old, to, do, to work as a model in Europe. And um, coming from, you know, working in an industry that is constantly being judged, that you may be too thin or too white or too fit or too skinny or too big. Within the years, I just felt like I didn't know who I was. That's how I discovered the practice of Ashtanga Yoga. I started practicing yoga because I was feeling completely off balance. It felt very familiar, it felt, it felt like going back home. I dove in quite deep, I was practicing every day and going to India every year to study. And then within the years I started assisting, then slowly I started teaching. I feel like to practice yoga, you should not exclude yourself from the society. It helps us to live with more um, a mindful mindset, being more present. This practice is going to give you more clarity clarity of who you are and how you can relate better with the others, how you can relate better with nature, how you can relate better with your work. So regardless if you're a doctor, teacher, an engineer, or a model, what matter are your intentions? The role in this life, where you're working, your job, is just a role that we're playing. And um, if it's done with love and respect, that's what matters.
I used to have to wake up at 10 to 5, pretty much four times a week. I was the elite swimmer for about 10 years. I'd always been very strong, but I had zero flexibility. I hated stretching, I hated cooling down, I, I hated anything that required any sort of muscle to lengthen because it was so painful. This whole new yoga journey was something that was completely outside of my comfort zone, but it inspired me because I was I didn't think I was very good at it, so I wanted to push myself outside of my comfort zone and try something completely different. So I started my yoga journey last year in February. Um, I was still studying at university in the UK and I was so stressed. So my best friend said, well, why don't you try yoga? And I was like, ah, no, that, that's not for me. And then he was like, well, if you don't like it, you never have to do it again. You just go to a class and try it. So I said, mm, okay, I'll go. I'll go just to keep you quiet. And so I went to the class. I had no idea even what a downward dog was, but I loved the practice. I loved the class, but I also loved doing it by myself in the comfort of my own room at university. At that point, I couldn't even touch my toes. something that I could uh, dive into and distract myself from all the worries, the stress, anything that was negative in my life, yoga started to bring all the, the light to any negative areas. So I started to see everything shift in my life from something that was so negative to something that I could be proud of. So when I was an athlete, I was always told what I had to do. I, I had to do things a certain way. It was, you have, to, you have to swim this much, you have to do it this often, and you have, to, you have to do this, this, and this. And when you get on your mat, you have this freedom. When I started practicing yoga, it was like this whole new world that opened for me. And it was refreshing. I could get on my mat. I could practice whatever I wanted, whatever I felt like I needed to give my body on that day. It was more nurturing to my body. And I felt just completely refreshed and energized for the rest of the day. And that's really what inspires me is not not looking in a class and saying, oh, well, they're doing downward dog better than me. Maybe they're better at yoga than me because your practice is about you. So when I'm on my mat, it's just about me. It's not about how, how good something looks or how flexible I am. It's about how I feel when I'm in, in each pose and how empowered I feel in each pose. And for me, that's that's what makes me want to wake up and get on my mat every morning is because I'm better than I was 18 months ago, I'm better than I was yesterday. When I first started practicing yoga, I probably didn't even realize it was a practice. I just went to a class, like I just signed up and turned up in a class and I had no idea that it would be a practice that would change my life. I've been going through a period um, of, of my life where I was just not really finding happiness and I was a little bit off track. What I can look back now and I can see was depression. And so I joined this class and I still remember um, when I came into the room, everybody's standing at the front of their yoga mats and I had this really kind of sweaty, smelly rental yoga mat and I stood up at the front of my mat and the teacher called everyone to what he said was Samastitihi. 
And then he made this really loud ohm sound and it really brought everyone into unity. And I remember my mind stopping and me feeling overwhelmed with this pure vibration, far more than just about the body. There was something in my soul that answered yes. One day, Guru Nam Charanaravinde Sandarshita Swatma Sukhava Bode Nishreya Sejangalikaya Mane Samsara Hala Hala Moha Shantye Abahu Purushakaram Shankarakrasidarinam Sahastra Shirasam Shwetam Pranamami Patanjalim after I'd been practicing Ashtanga Yoga for just a few months, I read Sri K. Patabi Joyce's book called Yoga Mala. I had a dream about him, and he appeared as this salvific figure that reached out to where I was in a point of darkness, and he picked me up and he put me in a place of peace. And when I woke up from the dream, the words, I have to go to India, were on my lips, and I woke up and I just knew that. Over the last 16 years, I've devoted myself to practicing Ashtanga Yoga in the traditional manner. And I turn to this practice as the foundation of my daily discipline. One of the defining things that distinguishes yoga as a spiritual practice is the idea that the asanas themselves are not ends, but that they're vehicles for a deeper knowing of yourself and ultimately a deeper knowing of God. Once you access that place within yourself where you are infinite, where you are free, once you see yourself through the eyes of spirit, you know exactly who you are. The way that the asanas work is that by approaching points of difficulty within yourself, you recognize who you are when you're tested. It's like we don't know whether or not we're truly peaceful people until we can experience ourselves at that moment of difficulty. So we have deep back bends, we have challenging handstands, difficult leg behind the head poses so that we can know who we are when we meet difficulty so that we can understand what it means to be strong on a spiritual level. God's voice inside of yourself speaking to you through your breath, through your practice, through the sense of surrender in your heart. This is the essence of the journey of yoga because once you experience that spark of who you are at your deepest level, you're a better person. You have more patience, more tolerance for yourself and ultimately for your whole world. As soon as you realize that what makes you worthy is not any sense of achievement, that the only thing that makes you worthy is the purity of your soul, it sets you free. So yoga really is a path of freedom, a path to knowing God and to setting yourself free in the beautiful act of surrender that is faith and grace every day of your practice. When you practice yoga, your world changes one breath at a time. When you practice yoga, your heart softens so that you understand that the spiritual essence of who you are can never be shaken. No matter what happens, the faith and grace that is the essence of surrender guides you through every moment of your life. It all began at the age of seven, playing in my garden. I stopped there to watch the sky and I wondered, who am I? What is this existence? Where am I? I was born in a wonderful family, but when I was 13 years old, my father got sick and died a few years later. Since then, the most important thing for me was to find the answer to those questions. years later, at the age of 20, I decided to go to Canary Island to discover myself. For seven years, I absorbed myself totally, meditating and uh, chanting the mantra and living in ashrams and temples in Spain, in Italy and in India.
for me, meditation is to sit and um, chant a mantra and try to absorb my mind in the sound and uh, let the sound enter in my heart and be focused. If we think about meditation, we think to, to gain something, but in reality we lose something. We lose fear, we lose darkness, anger, most of all ignorance. And then we can see and we can meet ourselves as we are and we can see everything as it is. And when we do the meditation all together, it's powerful. The most important thing I found in life is when you have a strong desire in your heart to fulfill, so then the universe conspires for you, guiding you, showing you the way. I'm a part-time yoga student and a full-time professional hula hoop performer. Hula hooping is genuinely, absolutely my favourite thing in the world to do. As well as when I'm hula hooping or, or, or doing yoga, I think they're probably the only two things in the world that I can do that make me absolutely not think about anything else whatsoever in that moment. When I hula hoop, I approach my practice with the, with the same dedication that I would in yoga, but the purposes are very different. With hula hoops, I think about how a move looks, you know, how I, can I get my body into the perfect shape with the right angles so it has the most impact on whoever will be watching me. I'm, I'm trying to create a beautiful picture with a sequence of movements and I intend to take the audience on a journey. But when I practice yoga, it's nothing like that. I'm not doing it for anyone. My creative mind is turned all the way down and I just follow the steps and the breaths that I need to take in order to, to stack the bones and the muscles on top of each other and uh, uh, to line everything up so that every single part of me gets attention and not just the parts that look good. And I think that to me, that's the ultimate relaxation. You know, There is no pressure to look good. The only way that I should get my leg up this high is if I, if I can do that in the exact alignment that I'm being prescribed. It, goes, it almost goes in completely against what I want to do as an artist.
practice yoga, I simply have no choice to leave my ego at the door. Because if I take it with me, I'm not doing yoga. You know, if, if all I'd want to do is look pretty in certain positions while I'm in the classroom, I'd be wasting my time. This practice has, has transformed my life. My personal journey with Kundalini Yoga has been a powerful one, a powerful one, very difficult at times, but absolutely worth every single minute of the, of the pranayama, of the huffing and the puffing and really moving beyond one's limitations. My journey began at a point um, in my life when I, was, I wasn't very happy and I thought there's more to life and um, I wanted to know how I could move beyond a place of being a victim to a place of feeling empowered, a place of um, not having my mind take over. So I was in a place of, of needing great healing and, and this is exactly what Kundalini Yoga has, has given me. It's really, it's given me some powerful tools to heal myself, to heal my body, not just my physical body, my nervous system, but my mind. When you practice Kundalini Yoga, you, your mind feels clearer, your heart feels more open, you have more energy, you have more vitality, you radiate. Who doesn't want more energy? Who doesn't want more clarity in their life? Who doesn't want to let go of the past? We all want these things. So we do need yoga. Everybody needs yoga in their life. Kundalini yoga is, is such a powerful technique. Because the asanas and the breath work are working on such a deep level from, from inside, from your inner core, um, this has such a purifying and cleansing effect. So obviously the work, the work happens from inside and then everything else on the outside um, changes. A lot of people that practice Kundalini yoga are often um, People often say to them, wow, you know, you look so good. You're, you're, what are you doing? You know, you're radiating, you're glowing. And we all know how infectious it is when, you know, when we feel happy, we want to just spread that happiness to everyone that's around us. So this for me is, is this is what Kundalini is about. Beyond, beyond the arts and, you know, beyond the actual, um, beyond the actual practice, beyond you know, the breathing and the, 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 the pranayama and the chanting, the after effects, the energy that's flowing through you, this is the magic. It's really like coming back home to oneself. You, you, you remember who you truly are.
process while I'm practicing is the deepest and most intimate experience I've ever had. I've never had such an intimate experience with another person. I've never had an in this kind of experience with uh, any other thing outside of myself. It's the deepest kind of listening. That's what I'm doing, essentially. It's not just a physical experience. It really is like making love to life, <laughs> to nature, to all the aspects of life that's so precious and so beautiful, which is why I'm so passionate about teaching. If I could help anybody to find this kind of connection to their self, they can experience the love of their life and the love of life, so the love of the universe through themselves in their physical embodiment, and that is the most precious gift ever. And surrender back to the earth. When I'm practicing, I feel like I'm, I'm guided by something else. I feel like <laughs> there's a language that is being spoken all the time that is the language of, of the universe and then it can be divided into different aspects of nature and each one you can listen to on its own and you can listen to the com combination of all of them and so it, depending on where I am in the world the conversation of the surrounding nature is always different and I'm always moved in a different way. I've practiced so many different types, and um, now my practice is definitely influenced by all of them. One of the things that I love the most about where I am at right now is that I can see how much faster I can drop um, the, the self-critical voice that may in the past have stopped me doing from wanting to try something new or would have made it harder for me to want to try something new because I was would be a, more afraid of, of messing up, let's say. So my practice changed in this way, actually, from, from moving in a, a sequence that perhaps I had learned or practiced for many years that was regimented in one way or another that in a way that I had been told that you're supposed to move from this pose to this pose to this pose to this pose. So I was calculating, oh, what do I do next? What should I do next in my mind? And it then changed to a spontaneous movement that would come before the thought. And the sequence unfolds now. And often I don't even know what I did on one side. And if we can trust for a moment and just, just even trust enough to to say, okay, well maybe I will mess up, maybe I won't know what to do on the other side, but let's just see. And who cares if I, who cares if I don't know what I did on the other side? Then we start to become a little bit more pliable and we start to give back the trust to ourselves because one of the reasons why we always calculate every moment is because we're afraid of messing up. <laughs> but if we can give up this fear of making a mistake, then we give the trust back to ourselves and then we can really let ourselves unfold. I'm feeling 
Maybe. 